part A of Big Bertha here. Finished up as far as all of the rope is in everywhere. So this one, all we have to do is sand it off once it's finished curing. We just did this inner here. This is the entry into one of the beds. And, but it's all done. And so we just have to do a little sanding uh, once it's cured. And then we will uh, set this one aside and begin on part B, which is almost identical to this one without the window over there. And we'll start routing that one out and putting all the rope in. So one down, one big one to go. Yesterday, Brian removed the excess carbon fiber from along this edge over here. And in doing so, we knocked a couple of these forms loose. Now these forms are temporary. They're just to give us the shape of the wood piece and then we take it off and then we just get rid of these forms. But they have to hold long enough for us to get those cedar strips screwed down onto them. And so he's re-gluing the, the few that, that we knocked loose right now. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to screw on the first five or six of these strips. And that'll hold all of these little forms in place after that because these will be holding them. And then we'll sand off and uh, cut off, I should say, the excess from this side because we won't have to worry about knocking these loose at that point. And once that's done, we can continue these on over. And then when they're all on, we'll start removing them from one end, take a few off and start glassing them back on again uh, with epoxy there. And then once the, the epoxy's holding it, we'll take off the other half and do those. So all of these things have to hold for is just to get a few of these wood strips on. And then after that, the wood strips will hold them in place. So he's gonna get those re-glued up, but we'll probably wait till tomorrow so the glue has a good chance to set up before we start laying the strips down. Okay, so it's time to sand this thickened epoxy off the outsides of our rope here. So this is a dusty, dusty job. So I'm going in, even though it's a little warm out here. Oops, need air. Okay, well, that's how it work. Ha, ah, good way to lose weight. But that does it. Got the whole thing now all sanded out. So we're ready to put Big Bertha Part A away and get to work on Part B. Somebody call in the cleanup crew. Time to get started on bulkhead number five, B. So Brian's over here uh, routing out the corners. And we've already taken out the foam, but he's got to do the corners here. 
because our device won't go in the corners like that. While he does that, I'm going to come over here and start taking out the 25 millimeter depth that we have here. So on this one, we'll be taking it out to here and then we'll cut a trough through this corner here and then we'll start going along here again. Done and Brian's over there working on the corners for me. We'll have this done in short order. All right, now we're going to cut the trough down here. Here, so we have a separate uh, router that we like set up for this. Okay, and now we're gonna do it again, deeper. Sorry. All right. Well, it's held, it's all it's held now is by the laminate. Oh. And you need to carve that out so I can get the rope in there. Right. Only on the top, of course. <laughs> Let's do Brian's favorite thing, sanding. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right. He's going to sand the other side of the hull here. And I did a little touch-ups here yesterday, and now that it's hardened, uh, I'm gonna sand up the nose of the boat a little bit. Because we love sanding. Uh, gotta get ready for my close-up. Uh, it's very, it's very nice, but there are still a few little spots that I'm gonna have to do another uh, bit of filling. The leading edge is getting really nice now. It's just about where I want it. Very sharp. The glass is gonna come out, and it'll actually come out to at least as sharp because it'll meet on both sides here. We can't bend it around here because uh, uh, basalt isn't going to want to bend like that. But we can take it out and then meet the other side out here and uh, sand it to a, a nice point and then the fairing compound will make it absolutely nice. Now the fairing compound will make up some of this but we can't have these ridges where the glass or basalt won't lay flat because then it'll get a, an air gap behind it. And so we have to make sure that this is very smooth so that the basalt lays down perfectly on it. This side is pretty good, but like there's a spot right there that needs a little bit more uh, fairing compound on it. Uh, spot right there, spot right there. So a little bit more, maybe one more round, and then it'll be ready for the basalt. Which is good because that basalt is gonna be here soon now. Running, it's coming into the LA port in, on July 1st, and uh, today is the 27th of June, I believe. So you can see we're only five, six days away from the basalt arriving. And then we can finish up this entire hull. That's why Brian is sanding right now. I love sanding. <laughs> and 
see these are all the fixes where we put some more glass, uh, excuse me, co uh, compound on here. And so he's got to sand all of these spots down here where we fix stuff. So uh, that one's already done. But up here, for example, there's a spot there. So we just have to feel along and sand off or there's another spot he has to do still. So lots of sanding work. In fact, I'm going to get out another sander and go help uh, poor Brian uh, with that job. Good morning. Well, thanks to one of our viewer comments, actually it was more than one viewer, but one specific viewer linked a uh, video from Dauntless, uh, another sailboat, who had a method of rolling up their rope, and they used a drill and rolled it up, and it was pretty slick. So what we did is we gave it a try with the drill, and it worked pretty well. The only problem was it came out a bit cone-shaped for us, meaning the edge on the drill side was tight and the edge on the far side so like this side was tight and this side was wider because it made it a bit of a cone shape and so what we decided to try is using two drills one on either side and that allows us once it gets tension up to pull both sides tight and then roll and that seems to work pretty well and what's nice about it is is that Brian and I can now do a six foot piece without having to have a third person here always because we don't always have a third person. And so uh, that's working out pretty well. So all we did is create some little hooks that we put into the drill and we just take and hook this in a couple inches back here into the weave. And once it's uh, hooked through here, you can just and it'll just start to wind it up. So that's what we're doing. Now, of course, this is dry. We're about to do it with epoxy on there, but we have one drill on each side ready to go. And Brian will be over there. I'll be over here and away we go. So I'll wet it out and then I'll show you how that works. All right, so we've mixed up some epoxy. We'll roll this out and then uh, use the drills to try to make the rope. We'll see how that goes again. And we're doing two at once because there's a taper on here, but that's because these overlap. And so it's cool enough right now, and this is the slow hardener, that we can easily get two of them done at once, and that way uh, the overlaps are both wet and you're also ready to put the thickened epoxy on together that way. Right. All right, time for the drills. We like to just prime the edge a little bit. Pull tight. Just lifting it up so that it's going tight. All right. There we go. With our taper on the ends. Okay. In theory, <laughs> this piece comes right to there. What was that? Because it's hot when it was in the sun. Good thing we're getting it over here quick. Kicking off over the sun. All right, so getting our rope. This is the trough we go through and that's because we don't want too tight a turn so for certain areas like this uh, we cut across so we just take that laminate off the top leave the laminate on the bottom create this trough and leave enough to put a five mil thickened epoxy on top of that trough. In this case it bends and goes straight into 
an exterior one, and that gives us a continuous piece here. To make it very strong. Okay, that's in, so mix up our thickened epoxy and get it in there while it's wet on wet still. So, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in within the about 45 minute window for this wet on wet. And yes, that's pretty sloppy. But I like it sloppy because I want it out of this as fast as possible because it'll kick off in this uh, container. But once you get it spread out more like this, it's a lot slower. And it's easy enough to clean up. I also like to put it a little bit high because it shrinks is it cures it just does it does i'm telling you so here we have it slightly higher we'll sand that down to the right level today we're at my garage instead of the lot to start with we'll get to the lot and do some work in a minute but today we have a little chicken and egg problem and what I'm talking about is our sycamine after seven months is finally arriving. In fact, if you'll take a look right here, you'll see that it is in Gatun Lake. That means it's been through the locks on the Atlantic side and will be coming through to the Pacific side later today, probably. So that means it's going to be headed up the coast past Mexico and to LA. So we're figuring it to be about maybe three more days, four at the most. And our sycamine is going to arrive, and of course it's got to get through customs. That usually takes it, well, from our previous shipments, about three days. So maybe a week from now we're going to have our sycamine. And we can't let that epoxy get above about 90 degrees. And our issue is that we need to build an enclosure, and we're going to use this air conditioner to keep the epoxy cool. But since we don't have the sycamine, we don't have precise measurements for all of it as to how large and exactly to make the enclosure that's going to be air conditioned. So our problem is this weekend, including today, it'll hit 92 today. And by Sunday, it's going to hit maybe 96. So that's too hot for this epoxy. And we have a 55 gallon drum over here of West System and of course the hardener. And we don't want to build the enclosure until the sycamine gets here in about a week, but we can't let this epoxy get above 90 degrees. And so therefore, we're going to build a temporary structure just to hold these two for a week in the warm weather. And so we're just going to create a little space in here using the boxes and uh, all kinds of stuff for the boat, because all this is different fillers for the boat and sails for the boat and all kinds of stuff. And we're just gonna make a little enclosure and we're gonna mount this air conditioner at the front here into a, maybe a piece of wood and uh, let it cool this little space for a week until we can build the real enclosure around all of it, including this. So there'll be a flow bin, a couple of 55 gallon drums and that, that all have to fit into that container. So that's what we're up to right now. This morning, it's Friday. We did a little work, as you can see, all those little blue tabs, those are all little tiny fixes that we did on this side because we've only really not done too many rounds of fixes. I think just one on this side. And if you'll notice on this side, there aren't very many, just a couple, a couple here and there. So this side's pretty well done, but this side we have to do another round and then of course sanding uh, on that later. But we got that done early because it's gonna be a hot day today. It's gonna hit about 92 in Southern California. So while it was 65 this morning, we did the epoxy work over there. But now that it's gonna start warming up a little bit, it's probably about 75 or so right now. We're gonna start putting our cedar strips on top here. 
And because these are only lightly glued on, we're afraid of putting tension down here and too much lift of a bunch of boards lifting on these and pulling these loose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw down a board in the center here right to start with. And then we're gonna clamp it down so that it's not trying to lift. That way, it'll hold all of these forms in place for us. Then we'll start putting on the small ones that go on the, the first three or actually four small ones and then one thick one. Once we get the four and, the, and then the one thick one on, we can clamp those at the end to hold them and we can remove this temporary one and get it in the right position. So that's the plan, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So we're starting from the top because of course there's no tension up here. And then work down to one end, I'll hold it the whole time while Brian not only does the screwing, but he'll get it uh, clamped down before I release it. I bet you you're disappointed. No, not you're I. Not, you're not sanding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll come. This is one of our long ones without joints here, so we're fairly confident that it'll be okay down here. And it is. We've made it all the way to the end. I like it. Look. Oh, that's much, much better. Now all we have to do is the whole thing over again over here. What we're doing now is we're putting the very first uh, strange board that meets up with the surface over here and this surface here, so we'll glue later. But um, for right now, we're not even concerned about where this form is so much as getting the edge, outer edge to match. Because that's what really matters because it's going to have to glue. So I'm just feeling the outer edge and matching it up to the board on the, uh, the actual strip that's going to mate to on the other side. Because all we care about is that that surface is uh, flat and ready, has the most uh, surface area for epoxy. I'm not using washers on here because there's just not enough room. So Brian's just having to be careful not to go too deep and split the wood. All right, our goal of the day was to get the first half of the dry fitting done. And so uh, it's all on. We did try to use one of the original boards in the middle where there's not too much twist and it snapped two more of those joints. So we just said to hell with it. And from here on out, we're just gonna go, all we have to do is buy one more board and we can cut two of these from it. And we already have enough for the end. So it's just gonna be one more board to, to finish off this part right here. So we'll just go buy one, it's like 17 bucks for one more. And then there won't be any joints in this area. Because again, when I'm pulling these down and twisting, it's with hundreds of pounds of, of pressure. I mean, I'm using all of my weight and strength and sometimes a tool to warp this down. So it's, a, it's under a lot of pressure right here. So no joints in these two areas right here is really worth it. Up here, it doesn't matter. Down low, it doesn't matter. But right through here, you just, it's just murder because there's so much bend and twist, particularly on like this board here. So full length board for all of it. And we'll be good. We haven't, we haven't snapped any of these full length boards. They've been working great. So, all right. And we did have to clamp down over here too because the twist of this is trying to lift these forms off. And so we've, now that we've got these screwed on, we've clamped these down to hold it down in place. And then we've also got clamps at the end down here holding it down so these don't lift. So that'll keep these there. And, and uh, over the rest of today and tonight and stuff, this will take some of this bend as it sits here screwed in for a while. So it'll be a little easier once we uh, have let it set for a bit before we do the epoxy. When they come off, they'll already have some, some bend into the wood at that point. One more thing I forgot to mention, which is this bend and twist isn't just about the joints. We literally are, are just snapping the wood itself between the joints. It's so much bend and twist. 
And I'll show you a picture of one of those that we put down. It just destroyed the wood itself. So it's, it's just under a lot of stress. So these full-length boards are the way to go. Well, with finishing up this dry planking of half of the top here and having done the patching on the hull on both sides this morning, we've already achieved two of the three goals for the day, and that leaves the last one. And on the last one is sanding. So Brian's going to be excited because he loves sanding. For him, I'm not going to make him sand, so I'm going to make him use the, or let him use the multi-tool and take off the edge of the carbon fiber along here to expose our wood joint for the rest of these. Because now that these are holding these in place, it'll be a lot better. That's why we waited on doing this one. And while he does that, now that this uh, thickened epoxy has had a chance to cure overnight, I'm going to sand all of it for part B here in the 90 degree Southern California weather. So this should be very warm in the bunny suit, uh, which is why I left it for last, because once I come out of there, I'm gonna be soaked to the skin. I don't wanna go home at that point, because I'm gonna be tired and wet and hot. So that's up next. And curse you, suit, curse you. As I said, that was a hot job, but somebody had to do it. Brian's still sanding the hull. He chose to do that instead of the uh, carbon fiber right now. I'm not sure why, but sanding is sanding and uh, all has to get done. So that's what he felt like doing. Okay. Oh, yeah. I jumped in a swimming pool inside of here. Uh, I finished. Big Bertha, part B. So the two biggest bulkheads are roped and sanded. Yay. Saturday, end of the week, and we thought we'd do a little bit of wrap up of what we got done this week. So one of the things we did is we finished up the rope and all of the sanding of the thickened epoxy on top of that on Big Bertha, part A and B. Another thing we did is we worked on the top of the four beam here and we cut these early in the week and got them attached on here. And excuse about the noise, that's Brian over there sanding, because he loves sanding. And uh, so at the, but we ran out of wood strips to put on. So at that point, we ran out of wood and we got them cut and we have them curing right behind us. So they'll be ready on Monday since they're curing uh, right over here right now. And there's only the one joint because as we've said all along now, we're using solid pieces either direction. So these joints here are setting up for Monday. And then we'll get the rest of these put on. Then we'll start the epoxy work and take them off, take half off, put them on, then take the other half off and put those on. So it's working out pretty well. The other things we got done, or mostly done, is the uh, canoe over here in doing some more patchwork uh, on some bad spots and I showed you in the videos where we were patching it but right now Brian's re-sanding oh you can't see me grinning <laughs> so uh he's re-sanding uh off all those patches uh there and getting that smoothed out so he's been at that for hours now uh, bless his uh black heart and uh our Epoxy for putting on the basalt is in the Pacific, headed for the LA port, and uh, it's maybe a couple days behind when we thought, but it's gonna still get here in about, I'd say, based on how fast it's moving up the Pacific right now, maybe three days. So we're still about maybe six days out from going and picking it up, which the Deruders, uh, uh, good friends of mine, are gonna help me out with uh, trucks and trailers and all that stuff to go pick it up, because it's a couple thousand pounds worth of epoxy and hardener that we gotta go get. So that's it for this week. Uh, thanks to Terry. And uh, of course, the hardworking and always working Mr. I Love Sanding, Brian Tassi. Okay, everybody, we have something very exciting to share with you all. Yes, we do.
So we wanted to do something to thank our all the people who've worked on this boat, being it family and friends that have come over and worked on it. Volunteers. Um, or our patrons that donated. have donated, yep. yes. So what we're going to do is we have leftover West Coast red cedar that we didn't use on the four beam. Yeah, I remember because we bought all new uh, inland, inland red cedar and used that instead, but that means we had a whole bunch left over, so we have an idea. So, we're going to take all of that, piece it together, and make two tables for our salon. Yep. And then, we want to engrave our logo in the center of those two tables, and then we'll engrave the names of all those people who helped us build the boat, and so they become a permanent part of the boat, and we'll use a, a clear epoxy over the top of the tables, but you'll be able to see right through to all the engraved names of all those people who helped us. And that'll remind us the whole time we sail this boat around the world of the fact that there were many people behind the building of SV Links. Which brings us to our sponsorship of the day. Now, what's interesting about this is that we didn't decide to engrave people's names into this table and then go seeking an engraver. I had the idea of doing this and completely unconnected to that, a company that sells engravers or tour contacted us and said, we would like to send you an engraver as long as you will show it to people on one of your videos, which is why they're the sponsor of today, which is so great because we were gonna have to go out and buy one and now we have one we get to use for this table. So let's take yes. a look. This is the Artur Laser Master 3. And I've already set it up, as you can see here. Let's get to the actual engraver here. While I was setting it up, it comes in a box and you end up having to uh, assemble like these arms on and insert this on and put the laser in and run the wires over here. Uh, really, it's not that hard. And the instructions, which normally instructions aren't really that great, but I will tell you the instructions here were pretty, pretty good. I really didn't have to go running off to the internet to figure out how to put something together. Uh, it went together fairly well. It does take about 45 minutes to get it all assembled. But what you get is... Uh, laser power can reach 20 watts, input power 80 watts, and can carve metal, wood, leather, glass, acrylic, and 40 other kinds of materials. Right, so it also can cut uh, in single pass 10 millimeter plywood, 50 millimeter pine, eight millimeter black acrylic, and 0.1 millimeter stainless steel. Even you can do multiple passes and do things more like 30 millimeters, like say black acrylic. One thing I would like to also add is it didn't require us to have any driver installs or anything like that. We just downloaded an app off of the uh, store for our Android phone, and that app accesses this, and the unit has a Wi-Fi, so it hooks right in to it, and we can control the whole thing just from that app, and so it required very little. Okay, so let's take a look at the app and I do a quick little test print of a name, just like we're going to do. So uh, it shows the... Uh, it shows the name that I put on there, and I can just slide it around whatever I want. And then I just position the wood in the same position here. And there's a, a way to have it check where things are at. So it'll just run a little ch check so I can see that it's going to land right where I want it to land, like that. And then they also send us a, a really nice air pump that ties in up here, and it comes in here. And so just instead of just the fan, here it has uh, air cooling the laser, which is great, being this is a 20 watt laser. And so once everything looks good, I can just say start. It'll ask me if I've checked to make sure that I leveled the laser. And that leveling the laser is so simple. It just drops down a little arm here. You loosen the screw and you just drop this down until the arm hits the thing you want. Raise the arm as you, after you tighten that screw and it's set. So pretty easy, but I already did that. So I'll just say I checked already. And then I'm gonna say start. And once that's done, it'll ask me for one more confirmation to uh, go ahead and engrave. And now I can just hit run. And it says, uh, you sure you're ready to go? Confirm. 
And there it goes. We are now engraving. And if you are one of our patrons, you could be engraving your name into the boat for the entire future of the boat. So we think it's pretty cool that we'll be able to remember everybody every time we sit down at the table because their names will be right there. All done. Admiral Marianne. <laughs> That's me. So uh, she helped build the boat. She'll get engraved in the table. All this is, of course, just a test. So our initial impression of the Ortur Laser Master 3 is that it was easy to set up easy to figure out how to use because I've never used an engraver before and I read virtually no instructions. Downloaded the app. It was so easy to just draw what I wanted and put it where I wanted and away it went. And uh, if we wanted to print something else like our logo on here, you can just download a JPEG into the app and start printing that. And while I'm uh, printing this, I, a couple other features that uh, I should mention is it has an emergency stop button here. so. If you screw up with something and, and, and you just need it to stop, you can just slam that button and it'll just stop everything. So you don't have to go to the app or anything like that. It also has a key here so you can turn this and lock it so that if you have kids or something, you're not gonna have them messing with your laser uh, and getting hurt or anything like that. So you can lock that. So emergency cutoff and a key to lock it out. So that and the, uh, the Wi-Fi setup, it's just so easy to use and the print size on it is pretty good. It's uh, not quite the size of this uh, piece of wood I have underneath it here. It's a little bit smaller than that, maybe a couple inches in, but uh, about that size. And so you can print pretty large, I say print, but engrave pretty large uh, pictures and uh, stuff like that. So uh, when he, the center of our table may have a pretty large version of our logo on it where Right now, I'm printing a very small version of it uh, just as this test print. But again, you can see how fast it was to set up another image, set up a different height wood, and get this thing going. It was easy to do, and that's yeah. what I like. Yeah, absolutely. And the actual engraving process is very quick. Right. Right now, uh, you met Terry in our uh, previous uh, video. Actually, in this video, he's in it, and because he's out, out helping us at, at certain days. And Terry's going to take all that extra western red cedar that we have, and he's got a woodworking shop at home, and he's going to take that home and build our two tabletops. Then he won't finish them. In other words, any kind of uh, varnishing or anything like that. It'll still be raw wood, but he'll make the strips into the table, bring it over to me, and then I'll use this engraver to put all the names and logo and all that good stuff in, and then we'll seal it up with epoxy at the very end of the project. So you can see we can engrave our logo in there. We have names, logo, and they'll just surround the whole thing. And uh, we're quite happy with the, with the product, uh, not just because it was given to us. Uh, I un was under no contract with this company, meaning I can tell you anything I want about this. There's no contract. They just sent it to me and said, uh, put it in your video with no instructions on that I had to like it or say anything good or bad about it. We've had a great deal of progress this week. Yep, we've got our porthole all patched up and the nose all done. It's pretty much ready for us to put the basalt on. And for that, we need our laminating epoxy, which is on its way. And it's, I track this every day. I go on the website and watch where that cargo ship is. And it's on its way up past, uh, just getting to Mexico right now, on its way to LA. So that's coming really soon. And also this week we got the rest of the bulkheads done, all except one, a little one here. That's the only one left. So we just have to put rope in one more and those are all ready to go right into the boat. Of course, for that, we need the second hull. So once the basalt's on this one, we'll flip it over and get started on that. To flip it over though, we need to get rid of that four beam over there. And so that's why Brian's still working on it. And we've got it down to the last two boards that we're putting together right now. We've already cut them. And then on Wednesday, we'll dry fit them on and immediately get started on the epoxy work. And we should have that four beam out of here. Probably, I would say by the end of next week, it should be off the stands. We may be still uh, putting on uh, the exterior 
uh, carbon fiber because we have to have the laminating epoxy for that. And so that'll probably be maybe two weeks from now. But we'll get that four beam, the wood part of it, all finished up. So anyhow, uh, one last thing. I just wanted to also remind you of that segment we just went over on the, our, our new engraver, uh, our tour engraver that we got, uh, Laser Master 3. And what's nice about that is we get to put your patrons that are donating to our project on there, and we're really looking forward to having them on that table and permanently in the boat. So that's very exciting for us, and so we're really happy to find a way to thank our patrons and our people who've vol volunteered or friends and family who've donated time and all the people who've helped us get this boat built and all the people who will help us because we're not going to stop putting those names on right up until the boat hits the water because we'll only finish that table at the very end. Yeah. So anyway, thank all of you who are our patrons yep. and all of you who watch our videos. We really appreciate <laughs> all of you very much. So. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. And we will see you next week. Bye.